Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to address you all at the Technology Convergence Conference 2016. The theme of redefining business in the era of hyper-connectivity is an enticing and electrifying one. Indeed, what we are discussing over these two days is both real and immediate. It is the very essence of our potential for growth in business and our potential for fulfillment in the way we live our lives. I would begin by emphasizing that making the third wave as inclusive as possible is vital to achieving successful outcomes in business and in society. If we leave our young people and our less advantaged behind, then we risk facing future repercussions that will increase division and discord. We urgently need to broaden the benefits of new technology through schools, universities, and civil society, so that we may enrich our soil for growth. It is in all our interests to help mold a new global generation of problem solvers and solution makers, one that remains Jordanian but calls the world home. I know that all of us here today appreciate and celebrate the fact that our evolving technology has the potential to be the greatest equalizer within communities and across borders. We must continuously emphasize that the third wave of connectivity is an enormous force for good and must be used to transform lives and communities around the world for the better. Being connected to everything and everyone through apps on our smartphones has already changed the way we live, but this is an unprecedented evolution that we must manage carefully. We must be particularly mindful of digital inclusion within our societies and across nations and regions. Organizations such as the, the Campaign for Digital Inclusion recognize the pitfalls of exclusion and celebrate the unbounded advantages of active social and generational inclusion. CDI started in Brazil in 1995 to empower people living in the favelas around Rio de Janeiro by teaching them computing. Fifteen years on, there are now 753 CDI programs running in 10 countries. It is a model that many others might adopt to maximize the potential of new technology. Today, the wonderfully, wonderfully promising third wave, the Internet of Things, bodes great opportunities for a range of new and diverse players. Competition in the provision of services and the birth of truly disruptive innovation will be global and may emerge from any local entrepreneur around the world. It is predicted that the Internet of Things will connect some 20 billion or more objects to the Internet in the course of the next decade, thereby drawing in the vast majority of the world's population. We all have the opportunity to give life to the pulse of a new, connective being. But we must remember that IoT is not only being adopted for economic reasons, but also for some very important societal ones. How we embrace, the, embrace these latter considerations will greatly affect the future of our connected world. Indeed, perhaps we should be mindful of how quickly the first and second waves of internet evolution came and went, and consider how our adoption and management of the third wave will affect those waves of communication and technological development that face us in the not too distant future. The internet of things will undoubtedly stand as the transformational trend over the next five to 10 years. In addition to the economic perspective where companies will very obviously look to generate new revenue opportunities and save costs, we will see unprecedented opportunities arise for the creation of significant benefits to human safety, health, and the environment. For countries like Jordan, the potential is boundless, as sensors become increasingly cheaper, network connectivity vastly improves, and the cloud becomes ever more familiar and facilitative. Our entrepreneurs will find themselves squarely in a global marketplace where ideas enable success. 
Many of the most innovative and successful startups over the next few years will shake up complex industries such as healthcare and education. However, we must remember that the challenges that face, they face will be more than technical or commercial. These new bloods will need the diplomatic skill and perhaps the patience to partner with those large, unwieldy, and often bureaucratic institutions that dominate and have thus far defined these sectors. They must steer their way through torturous and outdated regulations and a failing regulatory infrastructure. Heated discussions over policy and potential will enliven those essential partnerships. The brave will persevere, and the canny will thrive. But this is where we stand, on the brink of the new era of creative disruption. I am particularly energized by the prospect of entrepreneurs impacting and reshaping those major real-world sectors like health, education, transportation, energy, and food. This is how our everyday lives will change drastically over the coming years and change very much for the better. It will mean a transformation of mindset for many and a slow beginning for some as policymakers meet the men and women who will emerge from our grassroots. Of course, a crucial aspect to ensuring deep and disruptive change in the best possible way is access to funding. This too must change, this too must change utterly to facilitate a new age of entrepreneurship and, 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 and enterprise. We must hope that getting off the ground will become easier for the small-scale entrepreneur, as a result, cloud computing, and more importantly, crowdfunding. However, even in the most developed of markets, the larger funding mechanisms remain blinkered and circumspect, and lag far behind the diverse and dispersed drivers of change and innovation. Even today in the United States, some 75% of venture capital goes to just three states, California, New York, and Massachusetts, and 90% goes to men. These statistics surely don't match the vision of a new age of opportunity and equality. The benefits of crowdfunding as a means of leveling the playing field are quickly becoming apparent in some markets, but we must make sure that investment is available and properly directed in our own market so that anybody with an idea that breaks the mold or simply improves it, irrespective of who or where they are, has a chance to succeed. This is how we will all win in the third wave. Of course, increasing scale and broad success will inevitably necess necessitate those challenging partnerships I mentioned earlier. But the prospect of a future of odd couplings between savvy disruptors and sectoral demagogues is certainly one that I relish. Ladies and gentlemen, these are indeed exciting times, and this conference is a vital contribution to the debate that we must have and must have quickly. We are on the brink of an exciting age of opportunity, one in which Jordan and the Arab world has the potential to shine on a global stage. I wish you every success with your conference. Thank you very much.